program would help to uh, for you to understand what I'm talking about, about us at our soul level. Uh, when I asked Spirit what I should be talking about today, um, I got the difference between man-made law and spiritual law regarding suicide and euthanasia. So I didn't know at the time, but after they gave me that subject to talk about, um, I learned on the news that September was Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. So I thought, oh, and I know suicides with all the chaos that's going on in the world has increased quite a bit. Can everybody hear me? Okay, because I don't think I'm talking right into this. I'm not familiar with microphones. But anyway, so uh, Spirit asked me to, this is Dr. Joshua David Stone created this. The monad is part of our God part of us. And then the oversouls, the medium-sized circles, are the part where we go when we have experiences and go back. So, but the extensions, the little tiny circles, that's the incarnated part of our soul, which is in our heart, heart chakra area. So only three parts of our soul, there's 12 parts to um, extensions to our soul. And what's happening is we trickle down from the monad, we trickle down to the oversouls, and then we trickle down to the extensions. Our purpose for being here on earth is we need to trickle back up into the monad. And at that point, we will be considered a god, and we will be able to make universes and galaxies, and we can do everything that God has to do. But the monad is source energy. There's a difference between source energy and God energy. Source created the gods that head up the universes in the world. But anyway, I was on a cruise the beginning of September, and I did three classes on the soul. <laughs> um, someone else had already signed up to do Connecting with Angels, and that's my favorite, favorite class. But since somebody else signed up for it, I had to do something else that I knew about. But anyway, um, there was a girl that was using the same title as I was, Connecting with Your Angels. So I thought, at first I thought, I don't need to go to bed, I'm already doing that. And then I thought, I want to see the comparison of what she does and what I do. And oh my God, my stomach was doing flip-flops. And I kept reaching up to my guidance and I said, doesn't she know? Doesn't she know? Because Archangel Michael and Jesus are the ones who taught me how to do this releasement work. And what she said was that the Bible says if you commit suicide, you go to hell. And she said, no, you don't. You're encased in a bubble of light and you go up. And that's when my stomach was doing this. And because she was glorifying suicide. And if anybody was on the edge, well, they would have left and they would have committed suicide right then and there. But anyway, my guide said, don't worry, Archangel Michael will set her straight. All of a sudden, she stopped talking and she had this really weird laugh. But I wouldn't try it if I were you. And then she went on with something else. But it bothered me. And there was a woman who came up to me afterwards because I said suicide is not an option. That in other words, you, there's consequences for suicide and that is you have to do the whole life over. There was a gentleman in Connecticut that at 85, his uh, wife died of cancer and he was lonesome. He was so lonesome, he went in the garage, turned the car on and he committed suicide through that means. And he was 85 years old, and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's got to do all of that, that trouble that he's been through. He's got to go through that all over again in a new life. The only benefit to that is if you've gone through it once, when you're going through it a second time, it's not as difficult, but you still have to go through that, those experiences again. But anyway, um, so the consequence for committing suicide is that you 
have to do it all over again. It's like in school, if you're in the, um, going from junior high into high school, but in junior high, all you did was skip school, you went out, you played, you had fun, but your grades are Fs all the way across the board. They're not gonna put you into high school. Some schools do, but <laughs> they're not supposed to. Um, but you have to repeat that grade over again. So it's kind of like they were comparing it, the, the consequences with our system here on Earth. But anyway, as far as going to hell goes, every single soul that passes from the physical body but does not go up with their guardian angels. The guardian angels are destined to bring us to wherever we belong up there. Any, any soul that stays earthbound, you could be the most religious, spiritual person in the world, you are considered you're in hell. With, on earth, without a physical body, that's where hell is. It's not a fiery place down, somewhere down below. It's right here. So this is why it's not good to stay earthbound. But anyway, um, so my grandmother, for some reason she had some guilt in her life. I don't know what went on, but she uh, walked to church. She was a Catholic. She walked to church every single day. And when she passed, that guilt was still with her, so she stayed earthbound, even though she was a good soul. But she was considered she was in hell, so basically someone had to get her lifted up into the higher dimension. Um, we think that love is a, a good thing, and it is for the most part, but right now the darkness is working through really good people to bring people of light down. And I have a friend out in California, she has a sister that has been nothing but trouble the whole life. She's caused trouble, trouble, trouble. And so she wanted, the sister wanted to move in with my friend and her husband. And she said, I love my sister. She's caused me nothing but trouble, but I, I love her. So she somehow convinced her husband to let it happen. And it was supposed to be part time. Well, her and I happened to share a same guy. I got a new guy this year named Sanat Kamara. I knew of him through Dr. Joshua David Stone. And he's telling me to tell her, no, no, no. And she says, but I love her. I love her. And so not is going, tell her no, tell her no, tell her no. And, but not why. See, I need to know why. So I told her, but she still was going to go for it. So he said to me, she was suicidal at one time in her life, but she's gotten beyond that point. If she brings her sister into her home, she's going to lose her home, she's going to lose her husband, and she's going to be homeless again, and she will want to commit suicide. So this is why we are saying no. And I said, okay, that's good enough reason. So I called her and I told her the reason why the spirit was saying no. So, okay, fine. She went with no. The sister can't come in. Next thing I know, she's calling me. Well, she needs an apartment, but she needs us to co-sign for it. And all of a sudden, I'm hollering at her, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. And that's not me. I wouldn't say that to an enemy, let alone a good friend. <clears throat> and I kept thinking, why am I reacting so negatively towards what she wants to do? And finally, it was Sanat Kamara who came forward again. And he, at, he said, ask her if she's re ready to lose everything, because if they sign for her, They'll have to pay their own mortgage on their house and they'll have to pay for her apartment because she will not pay. So because they're co-signers, they will have to pay for it and it's going to cause a big financial thing, which again, there's a divorce that's a possibility in the future and there's a loss of their own house because they can't pay their own mortgage. So she doesn't want to do that. So okay, she decided not to do that. But she kept telling me, love. You know, because she loved her sister so much, she thought it was a good thing to do. Love is a good thing, but not to allow yourself to be a doormat for somebody else to walk all over you and cause your life to end because of the circumstances that the love creates. 
Does Tommy get last night? I said, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear a thing about your sister. <laughs> do whatever you want to do, do whatever you want to do. But this girl, I think she's just looking, she had a tough life in her childhood. And I think she's looking for love from her family from wherever she can get it. And, uh, but love is good if it's a two-way exchange and it's equal. But if one is taking advantage of you, then that, that's not good. <coughs> but anyway, as far as euthanasia goes, this is where the diagram comes in. Again, I'm from the corporate world, so this monad, that's the God force of us. And that's where Jesus and the archangels and all the others, the high level light beings are working out of this monad energy. And so if in the corporate world, the chairman of the board of an organization sends word down to these little tiny circles who are salespeople saying, I do not want you to do this. This would be wrong if you did it and you would be fired. So some of those little circles think, well, yeah, he's the chairman of the board, but I think it's the right thing to do. They would get fired in the corporate world. So in the spiritual world, if the spiritual law is we humans are growing to a higher level to get back into the monad so we can become a god and create our own universes. Um, we agreed to go through a certain amount of pain and suffering in order to get to that point. So as soon as someone is in pain and suffering, people want to give them a shot to get rid of them because they can't stand to see them suffering. But you're interfering with their life plan. And I, this year, I had so much pain, and it was when Sanat Kamara came into my being. He wanted to bring my vibration to a higher level. But with the pain, it was being kept low. And so what he was doing was taking me off planet to some other area, and that was fine. My soul was fine with that. But when the soul came back into the physical body that was in a much lower vibration, the pain was excruciating. I knew not that I didn't want to commit suicide, but I did reach out and I asked God to take me home. I knew it was my last lifetime. I only had years to go and I wouldn't have to come back to earth. But they told me what the doctors have diagnosed as rheumatoid arthritis. I only have it from my wrist down to my fingertips and my knees. That's the only place I've got rheumatoid arthritis and I'm happy about that. I don't want it in my whole body. <coughs> but what, what they told me was that I, the pain I was going through, even though the doctors diagnosed it as rheumatoid arthritis, what it was was karma from a past life. I was a male and it was, I don't even think it was in this country, or it probably wasn't even on the planet, but uh, if in those days, if you caught somebody stealing and you were an authority figure, like a police officer, you could cut their hand off. So if they were only using one hand to steal something, you could cut that hand off. If both hands, you cut both hands off. So I caught a man stealing. He had a wife and six kids that he was stealing food to feed them. And what I did is he tried to run away from me. So I broke both of his knees so he couldn't run. So that's, that's the pain I'm going through now. I'm balancing out from that lifetime, even though it's referred to as rheumatoid arthritis, but rheumatoid arthritis medicine doesn't do a thing for me. So I've been going through it, but I asked to be taken home because the pain was so severe with going out of body to another dimension and then coming back in the physical body. So what Samat Sanat Kamora did was he, he, he established Shambhala. So he brought me to Shambhala, my soul energy to Shambhala before I, he took me off planet. And then when he brought me back on planet, he took me to Shambhala for healing again and then back in the body. Well, that worked a little bit 
but not a lot. So what happened now is uh, I'm extending my time on Earth in order to have a lower amount of pain to deal with. So I was supposed to die at 100. Now they gave me 12 years and then another 13, so now 125. So I don't know if any of you are still going to be around at that, that, that time or not. But uh, that's, that's in order to, to make the pain so it's not so severe. But they, they told me that when I asked to be taken home, even though I knew it was my last lifetime and I would have to come back into another lifetime to finish things out, so I wasn't going to really get rid of the pain. I was just going to delay it. Um, I, I, a I asked um, how much longer would it take for me to, to have it extended, so the, t the 25 years, but it's going to be a good time because the solar flares coming, when the solar flares, everybody's going to be healed, so that's that. But euthanasia, if I, a I asked Jesus, because he's the one who, who told me about the, it's, it's not right because it's part of the plan, that we put it in our plan that we're going to go through a certain amount of pain and suffering for growth purposes. And I asked what were the consequences for someone who chose to have the doctor give them a shot to put them out of their misery sooner, or if a family member or even the doctor did it on his own. And he said it depends, because it depends on the intention of the person, if it's a loved one, and they're really, really compassionate and they feel that they're gonna die anyway, so why not you know, just give them the shot and let them go sooner rather than later. Uh, with that intention, there is consequences, but they're lighter than they would be. And the other consequences would be, well, the f it was inconvenient for the family to wait for them to die, so they gave. That, that would be more severe consequences. And the most severe consequence would be is if there was a benefit to the one putting the person out of their misery if they were going to... Um, gain through the will, if they're going to gain substantially through the will. So he said it depends on the circumstances when someone orders someone to be taken taken out. Uh, I, had, I have a friend in Florida and she was a caretaker for her husband. He, he was younger and he was much older, but when they got married they were both in the corporate world. But he had one thing after another. And she was into cats big time and she was an animal communicator. But what happened was she had the, the fluffy, beautiful cats that you would put in a show and get an award. And there was a stray cat, an alley cat that came to the house and she kept shooing him away. And the, uh, her husband said, well, you know, you've got two cats. They won't come anywhere near me. This one likes me and he lets me pet him, so let him come in, he'll be my cat. So, to make a long story short, he was, the cat would sleep on her husband's chest every night. He had lung cancer. The cat came, now cats have purposes too, animals do. The cat came to that household, it was guided by spirit, because it wasn't time for him to die, but he was going to die with the, with, the, with the lung cancer. So the cat was sleeping on his chest every night, and what happened was the cancer transferred from, from the husband to the cat, and the cat died of lung cancer. But that's, that was its purpose. It wasn't, you know, it was too bad, but the cat knew what it was doing. So with him, getting several extensions of life. It was these other, so we, ha we can have three other parts of our, our soul on the planet. So what he was doing, the suffering that he was going through was for them to grow to a higher level so that they could all get back up into the monad quicker. So for us to do away with someone because we feel sorry for them, we feel compassionate for them, that's all well and good. I've had many arguments with people, but what we can do is if it's something that we have done, uh, you know, ask the doctor to help them along the way. Um, 
through meditation, ask forgiveness of the person that you did not did not know that you were sunk in the growth as far as spiritual growth went. And uh, as long as it's genuine and as long as you're deliberately sorry that you know you made that decision, then um, it's all okay. So that's what Spirit wanted me to share with you today, the fact that suicide and euthanasia are spiritual laws that man, they can make their own laws regarding those situations, but when you get to the other side, you're gonna see a whole different story. So I hope I didn't leave you in a bad mood. <laughs> Thank you.